So this video today is going to be an addendum to my previously run tests regarding bacterial endospores. Today's test is going to be strictly steam penetration. I'll be using these chemical indicator strips, which are a type 4 indicator, meaning that they react with steam. Um, these are us usually in the center of loads to determine whether or not steam is penetrated to the center of whatever it is you happen to be cycling. I'll be running three grains all of them raw. I admit that previously the indicator strips may have been indicating due to steam produced by the hydrated grains themselves and not because the steam was entering the jars through the filtered lid and then occupying the voids between the actual grains themselves. I may have been receiving a false positive on these strips due to the hydrated grains producing their own steam and then indicating on the indicator strip. So in order to eliminate the possibility of a false positive, I'm going to be running raw grains today, no moisture whatsoever, with indicator strips folded in half and then buried central in the load. Each one of these grains has different sizes of voids between the grains, so that's why I'm running three of them. Obviously the corn is going to have greater uh, sized voids than the wheat or the millet and in the final jar there's going to be no hole in the lid or a filter it's just going to be cranked on tight with an indicator inside the dry jar uh, i'm just curious to see what will happen in a sealed container anyways it's not a very complicated test let's get at her i'm interested to see what happens There we go, they're all loaded in. Synthetic filter disc lids, 29 millimeter with an eighth inch hole. The pore size of the filters are 0.3 microns. I've added three quarts of water as per the Presto manual. Place trivet in. Now I've got these jars foil capped. The foil caps aren't strictly necessary, especially for this test. However, I like to run the loads uh, as closely to the actual loads that they are representing. And generally speaking, I will always have these touch barriers on my lids during a regular PC cycle. So that's why I've added them now. So a couple notes while I'm waiting for the water to boil and pop the valves on this to start the purge cycle. Anyways, I always use cold water. It takes longer for the internal water to come to a boil when it's cold, obviously, which allows all of the surfaces, whether it's the glass on the interior or the metal on the outside, for all parts to come to an even working temperature. Now I wait for the lid lock to pop and the overpressure valve the overpressure valve always comes up first i wait for that to happen because it's important for the small amount of water in here to actually come to a boil the reason why i do that is because steam occupies 1600 times more volume than liquid water and as that steam begins to build it displaces the dry cold trapped gas that is in there when the lid has been twisted on. As it expands it is pushing all of that dry air out of the vent tube and hopefully removing purging any trapped gases inside of the jars themselves. And there we go the lid lock has just popped. As you can see the steam is now pumping. I don't know if you can see it. You can see the steam is now freely flowing out of the vent tube. You can hear sputtering and burping coming out of there. That's all of the trapped dry gas that is encapsulated within the jars and within the vessel itself. This is now the time to start your 10 to 15 minute timer. Uh, 10 is the minimum, I prefer 15. The more time you allow for the trapped gases to be expelled, purged and replaced by steam, the more likely you'll have an appropriate internal temperature and the steam has been allowed sufficient time to penetrate the load. All 
All right, so I'll be running this for 90 minutes at 15 PSI. Okay, fresh out of the pressure cooker, and the first thing I notice is no change on the indicator strip in the sealed jar, but the lid is severely concaved. Clearly it pulled a vacuum and uh, warped the shit out of my jar, but anyways. The strip itself is not affected, so we now know that it is steam alone that uh, triggers the tape and not temperature. Let's take these off. And there we go. We have a positive steam indication uh, on the millet. Let's go on to the wheat. Dig around in here. Fuck. It smells terrible. And what do we got for the wheat? Let's see here. Fuck. The wheat, as well, is a positive indication for steam penetration. Oh, they're all... St it's very dense. The cycle has changed the color, obviously. You can see the color change in all of the grain. And it's densely packed. It's like vacuum packed. You can tell that the steam has entered the jars and has actually cooked the grains to some degree, some small amount. And here we go. We also have a positive indication for steam in the in the corn jar. So there we go. That settles it. The sealed container, the sealed jar that had straight up dry dry jar with a steam indicator strip had no steam indication steam was not able to penetrate whereas with the filtered lids the steam penetrated cooked the raw grain and penetrated the load all the way to the center where the indicator strips were located so that settles that